Uh, the committee will come to order. Uh, as the first order of business, I yield to the ranking member for an announcement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to announce that uh, four new members have been appointed uh, to the Democratic side of the committee. Uh, after consultation with each of these members, the following subcommittee assignments have been made. Um, Representative Danny Davis, the distinguished member from the 7th District uh, of Illinois, who is returning to the committee, will serve on the subcommittee on economic growth, job creation, and Regulatory Affairs and the Subcommittee on Energy Policy, Health Care, and Entitlements. Representative Tony Cardenas from California's 29th District will serve on the Subcommittee on Energy Policy, Health Care, and Entitlements. Uh, Representative Steve, Stephen Horsford from the 4th District of Nevada will serve on the Subcommittee on Economic uh, Growth, Job Creation, and Regulatory Affairs and the Subcommittee on Energy Policy health care and, and entitlements. And Representative Michelle Lujan Grisham uh, from New Mexico's 1st District will serve on the Subcommittee on Energy Policy, Health Care Entitlements, and the Subcommittee on National Security. I want to thank all these members for their interest in sitting on this very, very important committee and, to sitting, and sitting on these subcommittees. And we anxiously look forward to working uh, with all of you in this 113th <coughs> Congress. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. Prior to our hearing today, we will hold a short business meeting to adopt the Committee Oversight Plan for the 113th Congress and approve the Committee Report. The Committee will now consider the Oversight Plan for the 113th Congress. I recognize myself for a short opening statement. The, o <coughs> the oversight plan outlines and <coughs> excuse me. The oversight plan outlines the subjects the committee intends to review, evaluate, and investigate in this Congress. Although not limiting additional oversight and investigation, it is a good faith effort on behalf of the majority and minority to set a consistent and bipartisan. Uh, map of how we believe we can best represent our duty to our country. We have tried to draft an oversight plan that all committee members can support. In this case, I am pleased that I believe we have done so. Working with the ranking member and his comments and contributions, we believe the plan now reflects a truly full committee plan. This is better, uh, a better plan because Mr. Cummings has made it a better plan. I would like to thank my ranking member for his efforts in this fashion and would recognize him for any comments he might make. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and I want to thank uh, your staff and, of course, my staff uh, for working together on this oversight plan in a, in a very cooperative and bipartisan way. That means so much to us, but it means more to the American people. Uh, we suggested several changes to the language. Uh, which you graciously agreed to, and I thank you for seriously considering our input. In particular, I am pleased that you agreed to include in the oversight plan two issues of great concern to me. The first, which the committee worked on last Congress, is the foreclosure crisis and widespread abuses by mortgage servicing companies, which continues to be an incredible drag on the ex entire economy. Mr. Chairman, as you will recall, we started, we did some things up in New York, which went very well. And I think we still have a lot of work to do, and I really, I really want to thank you for it. In addition, you agreed to have the committee investigate the causes and effects of the critical shortages in prescription drugs. As you know, uh, the American Hospital Association says 99 percent of their hospitals are uh, experiencing drugs. Probably every single member of this committee, if they called their hospital today, the hospitals in their district, they would find out that there is a severe shortage of drugs. Uh, this is something I have been working on for several years. Uh, it affects every district in the country and every single member, and it, cons and concerns, it should concern all of our constituents. As I understand the committee's role, we will examine not only what is causing these drug shortages, but also the extent to which uh, some companies 
are sadly taking advantage of, of them to make illicit profits. Uh, we have discovered that some of these so-called gray market companies are getting uh, up fake, setting up fake pharmacies to obtain access to these shortage drugs. Then they sell them to hospitals and, and, and providers at incredibly high markups. Uh, this is an area I think we can work together on in a bipartisan way to help all the citizens of this country. Uh, with that, uh, let me say again that I truly, and I, and I really mean this, Mr. Chairman, I really appreciate uh, the cooperation that we have gotten. It has been uh, just absolutely, um, I mean, it just, it just shows, as I say often, you know, it is not just moving to common ground. I think it helps us move to higher ground, and all of our constituents uh, benefit from that. And again, I want to thank you, and I want to thank your staff. I thank you, and I thank you for your kind words. If there are no other uh, statements being made, I will hold the record open until the end of the day for members to submit written statements. We will now consider the oversight plan. Without objection, the oversight plan will be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. The plan has already been distributed and is in a folder at each of your stations. The clerk will designate the bill. The oversight plan of the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform for the 113th Congress. <coughs> I now recognize my, myself to speak briefly. The oversight plan has already been well described. It is in many ways looking at the best of what we did in the last Congress and adding to it the, uh, the best we will do in the future. Uh, I believe that it is a good bipartisan effort, but I certainly would consider that if there are any comments or amendments, that they should be spoken at this time. And with that, are there any amendments? Hearing none, the question is on adopting the plan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? In the opinion of the Chair, the ayes have it and the plan is agreed to. Mr. Cummings and our staff will, uh, will have uh, five legislative days in which to take any administrative or technical changes. And with that, we now move to the consideration of a committee report. And I will recognize myself briefly. Mr. Cummings and I have worked uh, and our staffs on a bipartisan report looking into the irresponsible Medicaid waste that primarily existed in New York. It has existed for a very long time. It has existed under both Republicans and Democratic administrations. It is, in fact, mostly about a system that allowed itself to be gamed. The report, which is in draft form or is in final form, but we consider it a draft, in fact talks about situations in which amounts greater than what were authorized under a law for Medicaid reimbursement, the law saying you could not get more for Medicaid reimbursement than you could for Medicare reimbursement, was violated by 35 separate actions of CMS. We can vilify New York for receiving too much money, or we can recognize that CMS had a responsibility, Federal workers had a responsibility to protect American dollars, and they failed to do so. If it were not for whistleblowers, including a newspaper in Poughkeepsie and others, this would not be before us today. This could have gone on even longer. With so much of the taxpayers' money being spent on health care, this is a good example where, on a bipartisan basis, we want to call out this particular failure, and we want to call out this not because of New York. In fact, uh, Governor Cuomo has probably done more to begin the process of reforming it, since it was discovered uh, and, and made public on his act, than any governor before. We want to call it out because we know if there is $14 billion in accumulated overpayments, as we currently calculate, almost $15 billion, in one State, there are similar overpayments throughout the system. This is something that even the Inspectors General uh, did not discover until it came out in the newspaper. So as we continue to attempt to get additional information from the State of New York, and as we continue to work on this uh, on, in consultation with the ranking member, I am going to move the adoption of this report one week further out. We hope that it will do three things. One, 
give New York additional time to help us understand this issue and include that. Two, allow the minority to look for additional uh, statements that can be placed into the Joint uh, uh, Committee report. And three, to fully vet to the public the important issue here, which is this is an example of what we must find in partnership with citizen watchdogs, in partnership with our inspectors general, and on a bipartisan basis. This is important enough that we will wait the time it takes to make sure when this goes to the committee, uh, to the House as a whole, that it goes as something unanimously agreed to by this committee. And with that, I would yield to the ranking member. Mr. Chairman, first of all, I wanted to uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to the one-week extension. I, I truly appreciate that. And I want to express again my sincere gratitude to you and your staff for your good faith efforts to work with the minority on this report. Um, I think that there is one thing that Democrats and Re Republicans agree on. And if it is anything, it is that the, t the, the people's tax dollars must be spent effectively and efficiently and be spent for the things that we intend them to be spent on. Um, and I think that, you know, when we are constantly talking about uh, where is revenue going to come from and, uh, and taxes and what have you, uh, one of the questions that we have to ask ourselves is are we using the money that we get the way we are supposed to use it? And so I think um, this report goes a long way in, as you said, uh, basically putting a spotlight on a situation that hopefully, uh, because of the spotlight being placed on it, will improve the probability of monies being spent properly. But it, it, hopefully it will do something else, Mr. Chairman, and that is that it will send a message to other folks that there are some people here uh, on this committee who are sincerely looking at um, what they might be doing. I mean, all over the country, no matter where it is. And I think that that is a, a good thing. Uh, after all, one of the major roles of this committee is to make sure that government works properly. And so that is, uh, I, I thank you. And finally, let me say this. Uh, your staff provided the minority with a draft of this report. Uh, they listened to our concerns, and they made a number of improvements we suggested. As a result, I think that you and your staff would agree that the report we are considering today has been improved significantly from the draft we were considering last week. Um, and with this extra week that uh, the Chairman has extended uh, for finalizing this, I think we will probably be able to work together to make some tweaks here and tweaks there to make it even better. And so uh, we look forward to uh, continuing our work with you uh, and your staff and making sure that we come up with an accurate report because, again, I think we all want, we want to make sure that whatever we do is fair and we, whatever we do is accurate. And as I said to, to, to my staff, it is kind of hard to make decisions if you don't have information. And you certainly want that information to be accurate. And I think your actions, Mr. Chairman, uh, go a long way towards making that happen. And so we appreciate it. And with that, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. For all the members, you do have a copy of the draft report. Uh, I, it, I noted that it did not say draft on it. Uh, because we expect that we'll, there will be significant changes in the report and additions, uh, I would ask you to treat it as a draft report and not publish it on your we websites. It is on the committee website and it will be noted as a draft. Uh, as we close out the business meeting, I want to make sure there are some something that people understand here. This committee has in the past looked at excess compensation. And uh, I have often been seen as saying, well, in the private sector, compensations are earned. I want you to note, because this will not be changed, on page 27 of the report and throughout the report, we note the compensations of individuals of companies and the one on the very top, the Young Adult Institute. Virtually all of their revenues were from Medicaid. So when we work on the final report and when we take this to the American people, one of the reasons we are doing so is that the agencies in, uh, in this particular case in the State of New York 
in many cases, if not all cases, were in fact essentially doing the government's work. These are government entities, effectively, and they are doing so and receiving large compensation. So in this case, it caught my eye. I think it is important that the report recognize that we have no problem with compensations, but we also have a, a recognition that the, we have to get a good deal for the American people. Lastly, for all of you, uh, there are other examples in other states. There are other examples in other industries. As members of this committee, whistleblowers come to you. Please remember, no matter what state, no matter what industry, we can have no sacred cows. We have to find a way on a bipartisan basis to go after waste, fraud, and abuse. That is our charge, and I am pleased that we really are focusing on it in this Congress. If, if there are no other statements, then I will take the liberty of adjourning the business meeting and going to the hearing.